ladies and gentlemen, Ensa. Every night, something awful. Presents tonight for your delight that celebrated star of showbiz. That Mandarin of the music hall. That virtuoso and master of infinite variety. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tash Fairbanks. Um, I acted, I um, scripted the plays, and I played uh, the saxophone rather badly and the bass. I'm Jane Boston. I was uh, in Siren as a uh, co writer, co performer, um, played the guitar, particularly was my thing, sang, sang a bit, a lot, a lot. Love it, that's me, that's me. Andrew Winter, I co-founded Siren with Jane and Tash. Um, did a lot of the thinking about the plays, but never scripted anything. Uh, I'm keyboard player in the band, was a performer, and also played flute. I'm Deb Trithiri, and I was the technician with the band, built the sets, drove the van, did the lighting and sound, and was the drummer in the band. I'm at Debs over there, and um, I, I, in France, we, I was there with some other women uh, in this barn in France, and she said, come to Brighton. And so I, I went to Brighton. I, I'd been in um, gay sweatshop and things like that, but um, I was at a real loose end. My mum had just died. And, um, and then I met Jane as well, and she, we started getting into playing music together. I played the flute really badly. And Jane sang and uh, played the guitar beautifully. <laughs> and so I felt desperately in love with Jane. And then we formed a little band um, called the Devil's Dykes first, wasn't it? Mm. And, uh, and we did also did community, uh, we also did uh, street theatre uh, mm. against, you know, anti homosexuality things, um, against uh, Corrie. Corrie Bill, all that sort of and stuff. And health awareness, health, yeah. against cuts. Cuts, yeah. So it was always very political. And um, then, uh, and then it was all punk uh, era, and so that's how we kind of got into playing in the band. I was in Brighton, and I knew I met Jane and Tash and Jude and, and, and the whole women's movement. I mean, it was a fantastic time, and Brighton was very, very vibrant, and um, so it was absolutely the place for me. I felt I'd come home, really. And um, so I, I, I wanted to do the technical side of things, so sound recording and. Um, things like this. So I joined the theatre group and from then on I built six years I worked with Siren probably a bit more mm -hmm. and I did everything that, other than the acting so I, well not everything but I mean I drove, the, much. I drove, the, much, I drove the van, I built the sets, I did the lighting design and operated the lights, I did the sound um, PA and, um, and you know, the sound operation during the shows mm -hmm. and um, and all the conversations between us all. It was a brilliant time, really. You helped write the plays? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all the, the plays, yes, yeah. because all the conversations around devising the plays, or well, not all of it, but a lot of it happened in the, in in the, the van. van. Yeah. <laughs> because we'd have hours of driving back and forth, and we'd talk about the next show and the politics of the time, yeah. and what we might want to show, and what we should be talking about, and what that might look like, what, what would we, um, how would we portray that. I came to Brighton, started washing up, so this sounds so delicious, <laughs> and joined uh, a, I moved into a household where there were feminists. Um, and it is crucial to what we've done. I became celibate, moved away from being heterosexual, knew that I wasn't a lesbian like half of those women in the house, or thought I wasn't, so I just decided to be celibate. And I joined Theatre Against Sexism, which was street theatre in Brighton, which was what obviously Jane and Tash had set up, but they were in the States at the moment, so I didn't meet them yet. And just realised how much I loved performance, and performance that had a political message. And then I was asked to be the keyboard player in Devil's Dykes. So when Tash and Jane came back, they came in like a burst of fresh air, because their dynamism and their inspiration around having been in the States, looking at the politics of women's politics in the state, your musical influence, your theatre influence, and 
absolutely, we started a band, all of us together with Debs in it. The, 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 the band was a kind of a, a motley crew, um, and we did a gig at the university, and they were famous for all um, ending at a different point. <laughs> <laughs> Starting and ending at yeah. different points. Yeah. And um, somewhere in the middle we might have met. And I think that the lineup was definitely you, definitely me, um, and Jen Green. Jen Green, and we think Rose Yates, and Heather, Heather on drums. But it was the first all women's yeah. band it that was, there it was, was, really, yeah. in Brighton anyway. We weren't um, a sort of, what do you call it, pogo. No, jumping quite different you know, really we were a little bit of reggae it's sort of it was a real mix of sort of a bit of ska a sort of new um, wavy we weren't culturally immersed in punk it was the yeah. atmospheric i always say that it was the, the atmosphere that gave us if you like courage to try yeah devil strikes ended uh, and then uh, bright girls was you formed. carried it off didn't you and then it kind of yes. we transmogrified and i was trying to find this date when we decided that we were no longer devil strikes um, we, were bright we were bright girls. That was the, the formation that we agreed mm. upon. The Concord, yeah. the Richmond Pub, the um, Pavilion, I guess. The Pavilion, yeah, we did. Well, that was quite that was a big game. Mm. The University, Corn Exchange, um, the Night. Did we play? No, we didn't play the band at the Night. No, 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 that was theatre. It's Richmond. So it's Concord, Concord, the Concord Richmond, the Richmond, the and the Polytechnic. Yeah. Lambeth yeah. Town Hall, uh, yeah. up in Bow, Bow Town Hall. Yeah. The Albany was it called? Yeah. Albany Empire. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we played in Holland, and we played in. Lawrence. That was our great New resource York place, Holland. Yeah. As we played, girls. Mm. Yeah. yeah, as bright girls. We and Siren. Mm. Because when we, when because the four of us were then touring as a theatre company, this was slightly, 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 slightly further. When we went away, the four of us together, we then played as a band, which we just called Siren, the band Siren. So we would be booked at venues to perform the plays and then the following night as a band. Mm. And we had all the equipment because we played music in the shows. So we had the PA and everything. I want to fall back. How we fitted it all in the band, I don't know. So then we would, um, we would play, we could play the, the, the next night as the band. And I was the drummer yeah. in the band in terms of the technique. We all doubled up with something. And when we came home, we, we, we would play Bright Girls gigs yeah. occasionally with mm. the rest. Awesome. Mm. We, we really mixed it up in order to raise income, actually, yeah. you know, more than exactly. anything else, you know. Yeah. It was a very vibrant yeah. time in Brighton, mm. and I mean, there'd be two or three things a week going on in on the, these various venues, mm. different bands playing, or just um, or just a disco, <coughs> dancing things. Yes. Uh, yes. And we would go to all of them, well, you know, mm. pretty much, you know, you, you, similar large crowd mm -hmm. moving around and so you, you know we'd go we'd be playing along with other bands and um, and it was just how I suppose it was a, a, the music it was almost like a music community in a way. John you know, Peel played leather jackets isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was our claim to fame but I, it, it, I think mm. the reviewers found it hard to contextualise it in kind of the movement mm. terms of the time. Mm. I think we didn't really fit into a mainstream music scene. It wasn't easy to, to mm. place us, I think, mm. place that music. And the, we did mm. aspire to be heard by mm. people like John Peel. It was a great yeah. you know, honour. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it felt like a real mm. honour, but um, not easy to, yeah. Yeah, to fit in. Critically and very, very consciously, wasn't it? It was a very conscious moment of forming out of the, particularly the literature and the politics, the books we were reading and the things that were being said. And uh, we just, as Jude said, we decided that the women only environment was where we needed to really chew this over. I was always connected to performance in some sorts of ways, kind of always putting myself that way and didn't actually feel that I had the skill base to. Mm, to put myself out there as a solo performer. I think I was always in that kind of confidence cusp. And I think there's something about, without a doubt, meeting Tash and um, gave me, I remember I didn't think, I didn't know how to do these things, to give them form, you know. And I think there was a lot about the group gave me form mm. and substance and an environment to, to, to test these things and develop them. And that, that was absolutely crucial for me. And I think not just 
theatrical or forms of expression, mm. but I also think mm. forming our ideas mm. as feminists and for yeah. me becoming a lesbian, yeah. I think it was so true, the personal was political, because we would talk through what was happening in our lives and that would become the seed of a play. So it was absolutely mm. so bound up. At the time, I think there was a reluctance for anybody either to take credit or give credit. Mm. So it was always jointly devised, jointly improvised. And actually, I think Tasha's role was underplayed at that point when we were selling. She was hugely responsible for a lot of the clever wordplay, the scripting it, absolutely. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. putting it on record now, absolutely. Many, yeah. you know, the ideas were absolutely together, mm -hmm. but actually making it into a piece of theatre rather than into polemic mm -hmm. was, was yeah, you. Absolutely, yeah. thank you. <laughs> a lot of the way Tash scripted was not as perhaps in terms of physical improvisation and it would be discussing ideas, discussing characters, saying how we want it to be and then Tash went away and pulled that into a scene mm -hmm. and then we'd try out the scene and think about where it would go. So, But it wasn't improvisation in a more contemporary, contemporary way of, of, of improvisation, it was ideas and thinking about characters and how could an idea be made theatrical. Yes, well, there was um, there was man and woman and uh, the sort of judge, judge intergalactic, intergalactic judge, judge. and um, a woman wanted to leave man um, and um, what what did she say? Um, <laughs> it was a court. It was a court case, as was a court. and woman was putting her point of view as to why it was better to leave man and man was putting the counter argument about woman would not be able to survive without him. But basically, yeah, she turned it on its head and said he wouldn't be able to survive. But, and so we, we went through history, basically, with all these different... And so he would put this one forward and say, look, 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 this is what happened. And then we kind of turned it. So there was... Uh, we, we had Mozart playing... The, uh, what was it? Um, <laughs> and then sister who was dusting would come in and just write note like that. Complete the tune. And this, she complete the tune. So they were kind of. It was lies. It was lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but it was. It was. Uh, it was. It was those kind of things where we turn uh, concepts on their head, uh, in, in and going through history doing that. Curfew. Curfew. Yeah. That was a big, big, big step yeah. into the heart yeah. of women's activism at that time, yeah. mm. um, violence against women. What was the, the book that, that, that came out, M Margaret out? Mm. Oh, The um, Handmaid's Tale. That's it. Yeah. So it was a bit like that, mm. but I, we hadn't read that, but, but, but it was that kind of um, futuristic, uh, futuristic thing mm -hmm. where, where um, yeah, women were owned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sh Char we had this, it was uh, Charlene who was played by you, wasn't it? Was <coughs> a, a kind of a secret lesbian, and mm. and I, I was uh, I was also kind of, and it was you had to scurry around in the dark to kind of get to a woman's place. Mm. It's really Ju atmospheric. Jude was owned. Um, she had Jed, didn't you? Jed and his begonias. A man. A man. That's it. A man. It was a very very yeah. hard hitting play. I can remember um, we when I used to feel so nervous sometimes. I thought. Somebody might get up and attack one of them, you know, because it was so hard hitting the play, and it would get the atmosphere. Sometimes in the audience would get so uncomfortable, and the heterosexual women would all be sort of climbing onto the laps of their men because the men would be going because the this. men were getting really quite aggressive. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a very hard hitting show, but it didn't pull any punches. You know, about no. rape and about very very difficult. Um, subjects. And so I had the plan that if anything happened, I'd cut all the lights so everyone would just be in the dark because you would know where to go mm. in terms of going backstage. Yeah. But that would just kill it, you know, because I just, I just have that's the only thing I can mm. do because I, I would worry sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I think we attacked were religion, yeah. you know, everything, yes. marriage, you know, fashion, you know, it, it was, yeah. it was 
all the roles that we women are held down really uh, were, were explored. I well, in all the plays, but in that one it was pretty. Mm -hmm. I think we were looking at mm -hmm. institutionalised mm -hmm. sexism mm -hmm. as well as personal. Yeah. So it was mm -hmm. a lot of how the institution. The state, yeah, yeah, isn't it? yeah state, yeah. religion, yeah. Mm -hmm. education. Why'd you join up, kid? Because of my pa. He made you? I wanted to be as big a man as my pa. He must be a fine man. You must really love him. I hate him. When I was a kid, he used to beat me till I couldn't move. Then he'd lock me in my room without food for a week. And then he'd hold my head under the water butt till I nearly drowned it. That's hard. But he did it for love. He wanted to teach me, and I'm really grateful to him. Yeah. He said, I'm going to teach you to be a man, son, even if it kills you. The war, Thatcher, you know, Falklands. <laughs> it, no, we'd yeah. missed a ferry to get, uh, from Sheerness mm -hmm. to, uh, to Holland, mm -hmm. and uh, then we were sitting in the van at the, the ferry station mm -hmm. after having gone round Sheerness mm -hmm. in about 10 minutes. And um, and we were listening to the news, and it was the start of the uh, Falklands War. It was just announced, and we just sort of thought, oh, jeez. That whole thing about the, the the brave boys going off to war, and the uh, the, the sweethearts lifted their their, their jumpers, and oh, like all the bare breasts kind of thing to say goodbye to the men. And so we wrote, so you know, all that thing about. Um, Patriotism, pa pa uh, patriarchy, uh, about heterosexism, I mean, all that stuff. And fused them all together and saw how they were systematically interrelated yes. to keep women's So position. if you listen to the lyrics of War Marriage, the song, and that's very much, that's all that, yeah. all the three shots that they jump at. War Marriage, you can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. um, love and marriage, mm -hmm. go together like a horse, horse and carriage. carriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, you're, you know, there's references to exocet and... Yeah, that, that's a great song, really. So yeah. that kind of sums that up pretty well. That, that the lyrics, sorry, I'm getting a bit onto the music. A lot of the lyrics, particularly of the siren songs, are very reflective of the politics of the time, really. There wasn't a love song amongst them easily <laughs> to find. You know, it was all about yeah. out there, the world, yeah. the world that was our target. Yeah. Really. Mm. We were becoming more theatrical, yeah. and I think within feminism there was definitely a, you know, no makeup, you know, sort of just ordinary clothes, and we embraced glamour, and we felt it was really important. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> but there was something, and also, the, the early seeds of quite physical theatre, so even though physical theatre had not been coined yet as a term, mm -hmm. it was... Uh, we had a lot of dance in it, we had quite a lot of movement, there were quite a few visual um, things mm -hmm. where we visual. didn't use language to put a point across, we actually used props. And I think, for me, I felt that our theatre was developing and we became as interested in the style of theatre as in the message, the message that we were trying to put on. And that was a real development. Rape was quite a big subject in um, mm. and, and the, and the power that men have in curfew, whereas, you know, from the divine was about war. So people could look at it slightly differently. You could look at it on a, on an anti-war level, not mm. only yeah, yeah. from a feminist, you know. Well, okay. you know so, so it was a little broader. Yeah. But you're right, we always had, we had loads of all double meanings, in the, both in the script writing and in the, the, the culture. Visual, yeah. Yeah. That was a minor strike. That's what um, instigated that one. Mm. Um, it was set, set on an intercity train. Um, but it was mm. what the, the base of it yeah, on the set on. was a large toilet seat <laughs> with a lid. Also, so we also. And, and it was it had some fantastic things. It meant if we were performing in a th in a <laughs> church hall where there was no rate seating. The, the toilet seat came right up there, so we had a stage that we'd bring in ourselves and we could raise ourselves above the audience so they could actually see I, us. I, I thought having these things to walk on would be quite good. So if we made, you know, like some toilet seats have a gap in the middle at the front, they don't come all around. So it was a toilet seat, looks like that. And then I had a huge, the huge lid behind and a massive 
thing built with a big toilet roll, so it had a big, yeah. you know, big roll of paper. Or something got some hand to tell me, so that there was the roll, and they so. <laughs> It didn't really matter that it, you saw it was a toilet scene, mm. but it was a performance space. They had the ins inside that part you could come around from behind, and so on. And, and then at the final scene, the, the lid comes down, and I can't remember the flushing, flushing of the loo. And there's a huge sound <laughs> of the toilet being flushed, and, the, and at, the, the, at the end, this whole lid comes down, and they're all standing in whoever's still on in the in the centre of it. So you don't know, and it, it comes right down. But there was a little opening at the back, so they could get out and come out and get to the bowels. Jude got flushed, got flushed down because she was yes. a representative of Thatcher. She basically yes, right. got and, flushed. And the whole thing is a metaphor for Thatcher brushing her hands in society. We also did go to Greenham. We mustn't yes, we mustn't forget course, that. So yeah, we toured and uh, yeah. Yeah. visited Greenham. So of course, this in a sense, if you took an issue apart from Thatcher and mm. a lack of society, it was um, it was the nuclear issue as well. Mm. 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 So it was yeah. now wash hands, please, mm -hmm. of, of <laughs> all all responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. This is when mm. the fifth member of the group joined, yeah. and this were she brought something unique. She yeah. had trained in France. With Goulier and Le uh, Coq and Le Coq, um, yeah. Monique, Monique Pagnon. Yeah, so she was steeped in sort of European physical theatre and uh, was also a musician. She played viola and violin mm -hmm. and she had a quirkiness mm -hmm. that brought a completely different dynamic mm -hmm. uh, into yeah. the performance. And so sometimes it used to look like two different styles that we were in our, how we developed. And then Hillary would come in with hardly any words, but with a very quirky physical style. It was fantastic. Unfortunately, she had the wordiest part. Yes, oh. yes, she did. So, oh. yeah, so the company has, has, a, sh has a shift of uh, ambience, let's say, and um, we moved into Pulp, which, um, as you say, the electronic instruments have kind of been not dissipated but we've, we've changed how we're going to focus our theatre integration of music styles um, mm. and uh, pulp sexuality yeah. what else yeah. that's what everyone else was doing desire yeah. sexuality women were lesbians were exploring uh, what it meant not it you know it was that transformation where issues are not it's not just out there it's what's within mm. yeah mm. Very different, yeah. very, very different from any of our other shows. Mm -hmm. But it was about passion mm -hmm. and flirtation mm -hmm. and betrayal. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was about pulp fiction in mm -hmm. terms of, mm -hmm. you know, trash. Yeah. But also, we read a lot of those early lesbian pulp and novels. Bannon. And so, we yeah. really referred yeah. to some of those tragic endings where they could never be happy mm -hmm. and there was nobody who was going to be successful if they were a lesbian there was got to be betrayal there's got to be death and there's got to be unhappiness we were saying things that were uncomfortable and it was almost about betrayal yeah. about betrayal because uh, it was a whole theme of betrayal uh, and that the, the often that the people you, you you know it's not always that simple to say it's this or it's that that, that sometimes things, you know, yeah. for whatever reason, get, get get complicated. And for the first time, yeah. we moved away from gender politics in terms of knocking men, mm. and we looked at relationships yeah. between women yeah. and women being the baddies. Yeah. She created our home. Mm. You know, she made transform that venue, so it mm. became safe and possible. Mm. To, to, to do what we did. Mm -hmm. We just mm. couldn't have done it without those skills. More than skills, you know, that mm. inhabitation that you did, you made us into real talent for it. And, wow. and, and made sure that the venue worked and people where we were knew what they had to do. Yeah, to yeah, she, 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 and yeah. We had our publicity here yeah. and we were selling this, you know, yeah. you, you, you were brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You did, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Selling the records, selling yeah. the tapes. Yeah. 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 yeah, while they were doing all their voice warm ups and putting on their costumes and getting yeah. etc. Yeah. You, you know, you just could concentrate on what oh, you had oh, to do. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. yeah. You were there to do and that. I'm very happy because my worst is my nightmare is to be up on stage performing. <laughs> so it was a very good thing, you know. I think it must be horrible to have a technician who you see the things you want to be on, to be on <laughs> stage. So but it was a really yeah. good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Only problem was that. It was unbelievable how we fitted everything into the van there. And Jane and I were the packets. Yeah. And um, because mm. we had uh, we had 
base bins for the band, which actually one of us, it was so unsafe, one of us would, would always lie there because three of us would be in the front and one on the speakers of the band. Then behind that we had the full set, like all the, and we, we you know, it would be substantial. Not really. a seat belt in Lots sight. of costumes <laughs> and everything. And then we'd have all the instruments. We all personally invested yeah. in really good uh, band equipment. Um, yeah. And so we'd come up to do a gig and there'd be lots of young men hanging outside, things like the Paradiso or when we were mm -hmm. uh, touring. Mm -hmm. so we were and attacked, somehow we? it really must have got on their nerves because we, we were not paying attention to them. We were sort mm -hmm. of young and just doing it. Because we carried yeah. everything, we did everything. Absolutely. Didn't ask for help. Really heavy mm -hmm. gear and we'd just load up and load in and they'd make comments and we'd just ignore them. So twice we were attacked, once seriously uh, with a knife and Tash managed to, with her self-defence, uh, disarm him, but um, yeah, in, um, in, uh, in outside the paradise, outside the paradise, yeah. yeah. really frightening. Mm -hmm. um, but other, but all you know, but and really, not another time we had a, a paving stone lobbed through the back of the van. Yeah. <laughs> but but it was interesting mm -hmm. how we were not being aggressive. It, we weren't the aggressive lesbians. We were just getting on with doing our performance and whatever. Yeah, that's what got but it nose. just wound mm. the blokes up. So it wasn't. It was an interesting. Yeah. Interesting dynamic. Because we were touring to very small towns, um, there would be the debate afterwards would be very interesting. Within the theatre, it would be quite stilted and quite difficult in the sort of formal after show discussion when we'd be sitting on the stage. But we'd go out into the pub or where people going. were congregating. And it would be incredible. I mean, women would come mm -hmm. back and say, I think this has changed my life. You've yeah. said what I've been feeling. And there'd be a lot more debate in the pub afterwards. Yeah. But the formal discussion after the show was not where we got most of the feedback and the debate. It was definitely... Yeah. Um, a lot of some were, I mean, we had quite a few women come up saying, I've never said anyone but on the lesbian, you know. I got a job in a community transport organisation and I've gone on to be deputy chief exec and I absolutely love it and I've had mm -hmm. nothing to do with uh, theatre since other than be completely going to see it but no <laughs> band anymore, no theatre um, other than as a um, you know as an audience and it's very different and I love it it took me a while to be able to go and watch theatre again after I wasn't performing but um, mm -hmm. I'm a very successful businesswoman. I now manage um, I manage people's building works of various from from small jobs, new kitchens, new bathrooms, back extensions, you know, and some property development I've done. <coughs> and um, very successful. I've been doing that for twelve years, and it's all word of mouth, and I go I seem to go from one job to another. And um, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Debs does a lot of work for. Uh, older women now who have been in the women's movement who we've known for years and years from spare rib, from yeah, yeah, many, many funny. backgrounds yeah. that they're now suddenly of an age where they need somebody to manage their houses. There seems to be a movement amongst women of our age now mm -hmm. around either they're going to do, they sort of see, you know, see themselves now as, okay, I'm going to paint my place and get a new kitchen and this because now this is going to be my next 20 years, mm -hmm. so I'm going to do this bit to my house now. And I seem to have got into a circuit. I got commissioned to write some plays by um, community um, and political um, uh, groups. Um, and some of that was okay and some of it, I, I, I think, um, I, I miss working in a group very much. It was in helping my um, now ex-partner's um, son, um, who was very much into theatre, to get into RADA and then to kind of do auditions and, and stuff like that. I started um, feeling a lot more about theatre again, and you know, uh, and we started writing this play together, which was at the Finborough um, Fog. Um, and, uh, it's just recently been on. Uh, mm. and, uh, it, and it was lovely writing with someone else again. I trained in voice. I, I, I thought, well, in order to make a living again, I have to make one of these strands work on my own. And I, for no conscious reason, really, just heard about this voice course here at Central, and it just seemed to speak to me. And it, it really 
put me uh, right into mainstream theatre training and I had to sort of start all over again. I didn't have the confidence actually then to reflect my radical position. I thought I have to learn the whole of the, the system that it was at Central and the mainstream drama schools and that's what I did. I, I started from the bottom and worked my way through the system to learn how is it done, how do you work with mainstream theatre as opposed to fringe theatre and what, <coughs> what do you do with that, what are the ingredients and I, it was, it, was a, it was a very conscious you know, learning process. It really took a long time at doing it and eventually I found my way into, uh, I'd say I'm just about to find myself now in, in a sense of position of, of now I run the course that trained me and it's taken uh, an arc of however many years, it's been 20 years, 25 years or something. I think, I think that's, you're right, that's, that's Siren and the way of understanding that you can make a difference and transform the world and, and use theatre as a, as a way of looking at social relations and inequity. And it, it, I suppose it just doesn't go away once you've got it. And we all seem to have done it in different kinds of ways. It just hasn't gone away. And now, on with the show! Take it away, girls! Do it for Daddy! Entertainment. Entertainment with music um, in a theatrical context. So, I mean, that's, that's really where we're at, with a political bite, uh, and to as broad an audience as possible. We feel it's very strong, being an all-women theatre group,